What's going on my dudes? It's Dennis from DJ Custom Baits, finally back. I've been away for a while. I uh, have been redoing my shop, started making baits full time. It's my full time job now and um, had a surgery done. So finally back, we're gonna get into the videos. I got lots of stuff planned, lots of stuff coming, but for today it's gonna be a quick tip video. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna go about making stencils, whether it be um, fin stencils, whether it be musky, stencils, whatever you want to do, perch bars, whatever kind of stencil you want to make, I'm going to show you how I go about making them um, and how I go about sealing them so I can preserve them to last longer and not fall apart. But I'm going to set back up and I'll get right back with you guys and show you all how I do it. Alright boys, so first thing I want to say is this is by no means the best way or the only way you can do this. It's just the way that I do it. I take my stencil that I use to cut out my baits and if we come down here to the paper, first thing I do is obviously I trace it on there. Not a perfect, at least for in my case because my baits aren't completely flat on the side, but it's not a perfect, at least in my case it's not a perfect way of doing it because my baits are rounded and the stencil is of my bait before I round it and do the routing sanding and all that good stuff but it gives me a general idea I know I should go a little bit smaller than what it actually the size of this is um, after I do that I have the base of the bait I want to do a stencil and determine what I want to do oh and I forgot to mention what I use for my stencils is cardstock uh, I have used the plastic but I don't really like the plastic because it lets the paint sit on there and then if you happen to flip it over and use the other side it comes off on your paint job and it flakes off randomly and uh, the cardstock does not. Cardstock obviously always doesn't hold up a little better but it, I can make it flex a little better to fit my baits and uh, it doesn't get paint residue on my baits if I happen to use the same stencil on either side. I like to try and duplicate my stencil so I have one for the right and one for the left so I don't have to even worry about that but um, just in case it, I like the cardstock better. Now, I'm by no means good at drawing or anything, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to do it. So I typically will just start off, let's just say I want to do a gill, and obviously look at the fish that you want to replicate, or a lot of gill plates that people use, including myself, aren't exactly realistic, but they look cool, so you look at people's you like and get an idea. And then I draw it out. Just a rough drawing of it, so you, you can have somewhere to cut obviously and then it's pretty simple you cut it and I keep both ends because a lot of my stencils um, I like to use each side of the cut stencil for one thing or the other like for my gills I like to use head side of the stencil to hold to spray my white on the back side and then vice versa to spray when I spray my um, transparent black to fade it in I like to use the back side of the stencil um, obviously razor blade you could use there's better razor blades for cutting stencils I like to have the cutting soft cutting board too reason being it helps keep your razor blade from slipping while you're cutting the paper and you get a nice clean cut All right, so we got our cut, our gill plate, how we want it. Obviously not the best cut I ever did, but I'm gonna show you how I go back in and fix the imperfections afterwards anyways. So once that's cut, this is not cardstock by the way, I ran out, so I'm just using regular paper as an example for you, but you can get cardstock, the cutting board, whatever you need, all from like a Hobby Lobby or a Michaels or something like that. Once it's cut out, I usually trim it down a little bit so that you don't have all that extra. But I want to keep it somewhat large so I don't have to worry about overspray when I'm spraying my lines. Um, it doesn't need to be this big, but sometimes it's easier to work with that way anyway. From there, from there, the next step I do, which I can't exactly do with this paper, but if this were cardstock, is I go in with a piece of sandpaper and I'll just sand the edges down oh so nicely and softly. Gently? I don't know. Gently, we'll go with gently. I go in and sand the edges down nice and gently, and then I just, once that's done, my stencil is exactly how I like it, on both the front and the back side, I will take it 
and I will use Mod Podge. Let me see if I can get that to focus. Mod Podge. Roof focus. But yeah, Mod Podge. You can get it at any Hobby Lobby, any craft store, stuff like that. And um, you just take a paintbrush, paint it on lightly. It, you can use a heat gun or a hair dryer to dry it quicker, but um, usually I just let one side dry and then I flip them over to the other side. You can do more than one coat if you want. Your stencils usually will like shrink into almost a bend, which is kind of works out in my case, having super rounded baits. Um, but you can get them, you just heat them up with a heat gun or a uh, hair dryer and you can get them to come back or just by bending them they come back fine. The Mod Podge works good. Basically what it does is it doesn't allow the paint to soak into the paper. And actually it's kind of weird because that makes it sound like I'm, it makes it like the plastic, which it doesn't. It allows the paint to soak into the paper without ruining the stencil if that makes sense. I've used cardstock and not that use Mod Podge and they don't last that long. It works, try it out. And then obviously after you're done, go back in with sandpaper again, clean up any edges that aren't right, good to go. I do actually do that periodically even just some paint building up on it. But that is gonna be it for this quick tip video. I'm gonna try and get a quick tip video out every week along with a couple other videos of painting and woodworking and whatnot. Oh my God, how to paint detailed fins. No, detailed gills coming. More detailed than just a black and a white if I didn't already put them up. Lots of nice stuff coming, so subscribe, stay tuned, and I'll check back with you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh, and if you guys don't subscribe and like this video, you'll be cursed with eight months with no fish. Subscribe, like it, stay tuned. See you boys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace.